Thank you for being a part of today's study, the Gospel of Matthew. If you've been reading this gospel, you may have wondered how the religious authorities could have been so blind. Jesus spoke words that have been quoted for centuries with his famous Sermon on the Mount message, but they seem to be completely unresponsive to them. He healed people all over the northern reaches of Israel, and they said he did this to deceive the people. How can someone be so great and yet be rejected by God's very own people? Jesus explained how this happened by telling the parable of the sower. The parable is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, produced a grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. Like us, the followers of Jesus needed the parables explained. Jesus first told them why he used parables when speaking. This will be our topic for tomorrow's article. Then he explained the four types of fields that represented the different ways that people responded to him. Some people fail to respond to Jesus because his teaching does not penetrate their hearts. Jesus said, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. Matthew 13, verse 9. The heart describes the gateway to the person. It's comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions of a person. The book of Romans describes how people can become like those whose heart resembles a beaten down pathway. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Romans chapter 1 verse 21. People like this are not able to receive God's word. Their understanding is clouded because they choose their own self-sufficiency and self-will over God. The only hope for pathway people is that they will forsake self-will and self-pleasure and begin following the direction of Jesus. When this happens, the things of God that seem so hard to understand become clear. Jesus explained rocky ground people like this. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Matthew 13, verses 20 and 21. What kind of people resemble this kind of person? The soil represents receptivity to Jesus. The rocks beneath the picture, beneath the soil, picture our self-life that still controls our mind, will, and emotions. The rocky ground person is someone who appears to follow Jesus, but underneath self-will, self-pleasing, self-sufficiency, self, self, and more of self is firmly in control. If something happens that does not satisfy the self-life that is underneath the apparent life of Christ, the self-life will immediately spring into action and show the true nature of the person's relationship with Jesus. The answer for the rocky ground person is to continually cooperate with the Holy Spirit in removing the self-life from the rule of the person and to replace it with the leadership of the Spirit. This is a process that will work if we don't give in to the rule of the self-life. I found that praying and affirming Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is a helpful way to remind myself who should be on the throne of my life. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loves me 
and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Those whose soil contains thorny weeds are described by Jesus with these words. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Matthew 13, verse 22. I expect there are few people who don't resemble this field to some degree. We're living in a time when anxiety or cares run very high. It seems that there is one threatening issue after another taking place in the world. When we put down the things that distract us and try to quiet our mind, the anxieties of life flood our minds and make it difficult for us to respond to Jesus. Americans have been seduced by the quest for more and more material objects. The pursuit of money to pay for our lifestyles can choke out any voice from the Lord. Many people work long hours and have little leisure time. Their leisure time is filled with mind-numbing entertainment of all sorts. Coach Jake Taylor often speaks about taking time for solitude. Getting alone and away from distractions on a regular basis will open the gateway of our lives for Jesus to speak. Since we're so preoccupied with distractions and worry, it makes them take some time for this to work. However, if we stay with it, Jesus will speak to our hearts and give us the leadership we need. After looking at three unfortunate ways to live, we finally come to the soil that describes a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Jesus said, As for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and in another thirty. Matthew 13, verse 23. The good soil person hears Jesus' directions, understands his directions, and follows his directions. In the Bible, hearing is never a mere intellectual event. Hearing and obeying is almost interchangeable in the thinking of the Bible. I believe the parable of the sower has two applications for people. First, God's goal is that we become good soil people by hearing, understanding, and obeying his direction. I believe that each of the other soils are intended to be transformed by the gracious action of God and our cooperation with him into good soil. Unfortunately, there's a sad aspect of this parable. It describes how people will respond to Jesus' message. We all probably know people who fit the three sad categories and who remain characterized by them. Don't stop praying for them. Continue to ask God to draw them to begin responding in a positive way to Jesus. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for this parable. Please work in the lives of people who are represented by the various kinds of soil. And please help us through your spirit to be kind of the kind of people who hear, understand, and obey your directions for life. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of this today. I pray that God blesses you richly. Have a great day.